Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, classmates. We are the group two and we are going to tackle about the ancient Rome. So I am Justin Lee J. De La Cruz and I would like to introduce my core reporters. Hello, everyone. My name is Trixa Sofia El Bautista. Hello, everyone. I am Priya Lisa Sonia C. Castro. Good evening. My name is Charles Spencer J. De La Cruz. Hello, everyone. I am Jayvel Escobar. I am Maria Excelsis Lea Floresca. Hello, everyone. I am Desiree Gian Ogrupo. Good e Hello, everyone. My name is Ariza Jacinto. And we are also with Daphne Ann Ugot. So the first reporter will be Desiree Ann Group. Desiree Gian Group. So let's talk about ancient Rome. So ancient Rome for several centuries, it was the most powerful nation on earth, excelling all other others at military organization and warfare, warfare rather, engineering and architecture. But on the whole, we can say that Roman Art was predominantly derivative and above all utilitarian, or they focus on the the outcome rather than the procedure. So it served as a purpose and a higher good, the dissemination of Roman values along with the respect for Roman power. So Roman art was the um, represented the power that Rome has. Now let's go to ancient civilization arts and their contributions. Next slide is about Roman art, when and where. Ancient Roman art is a very broad topic spanning almost 1,000 years and three continents from Europe into Africa and Asia. The first Roman art can be dated back to 590 CE with the legendary founding of the Roman Republic and lasted until 336 CE, sorry. Roman art encompasses a broad spectrum of media, including marble, painting, mosa painting mosaic, gem um, gems, silver and bronze work, and terracotta. Correct me if ano po yung pronunciation ko. Just to name a few. The city of Rome was a melting pot and the Romans had no qualms about adopt, adopting artistic influences from the other Mediterranean cultures that surrounded and preceded them. For this reason, it is common to see Greek, Etruscan, and Egyptian influences throughout Roman art. So, who made Roman art? So, we don't know much about who made Roman art. Artists certainly, artists certainly existed in antiquity, but we know very little about them, especially during the Roman period because of a lack of documentary evidence, such as contracts of letter or letters. What evidence we do have, such as Pliny the Elder's natural history, pays little attention to contemporary artists and often focuses more on the Greek artists of the past. As a result, scholars do not refer to specific artists, but consider them generally as a largely anonymous group. So what did they do? Roman art encompasses private art made for Roman homes as well as art in the public sphere. The elite Roman home provided an opportunity for the owner to display his wealth, taste, and education to his visitors, dependents, and clients. Since Roman homes were regularly visited and were meant to be viewed, their decoration was of the utmost importance wool paintings, mosaics, and sculptural displays were all incorporated seamlessly with small luxury items such as bronze figurines, 
and silver bows. The subject matters range from bows of important ancestors to mythological and historical scenes, still lifes, and landscapes. Also create the idea of an erudite pattern steeped in culture. Next is we have Republican Rome. Um, the mythic founding of the Roman Republic is supposed to have happened in 509 BCE when the last Etruscan king, Tarquin, Tarquinius Superbus, was overthrown. During the Republican period, the Romans were governed by annually elected magistrates, the two consuls being the most important among them, and the Senate, which was the ruling body of the state. Eventually, the system broke down and civil wars ensued between 142 BCE. The wars were finally brought to an end when the Octav Octavian, later called Augustus, defeated Mark Antony in the Battle of Actium in 31 BCE. In the Republican period, art was purchased in the service of the state, depicting public sacrifices or celebrating victorious military campaigns. Portraiture extolled the communal goals of the Republic, hard work, age, wisdom, being a community leader and soldier. Patron, patrons choose to have themselves represented with balding heads, large noses, and extra wrinkles, demonstrating that they had spent their lives working for the Republic as model citizens, flaunting their acquired wisdom with each furrow of the pro. Roman sculptures were true portraits, capturing every wrinkle and dimple and strand of hair. The extreme devotion to a realistic depiction is called verism. In short, your Roman Republican art is the artistic production that took place took place in Roman territory during the period of the Republic, conventionally from 509 BC to 27 BC. The military, political, and economic development of the Roman Republic did not coincide with the development of an autonomous artistic civilization. In addition, uh, in the Republican period, at least three artistic moments can be distinguished the first, the continuation of ar archaic culture, where production in the city did not manifest any stylistic characteristics of its own. Second, linked to the conquest of Greece and the arrival of huge spoils of work of arts. And the third is um, phase starting during the reign of Sulia, and specifically Roman artworks began to appear. Now next is the five art contributions. Of Republican. Now first is the Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus. The Temple of Jupiter symbolized the severity and immortality of Roman civilization in an effort to dis distinguish itself from neighboring peoples when establishing the New Roman Republic. Um, itong Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus, ito yung para naging, nag-symbolize as a, the power of Roman civilization. Tapos ito yung nagpaiba, kaya itong naging difference, kaya kakaiba siya sa mga ibang mga nations. So the temple served as a lasting reminder of the moment when the Romans asserted their independence. The um, uh, Temple of Jupiter Maximus. It was the uh, the uh, it was made at the founding of the Roman Republic. Kaya nagkaroon ng Roman Repu nung nagkaroon ng Roman Republic nagawa ito. Kaya um uh, kaya this uh, Temple of Jupiter 
um, served as the their independence. And the temple was a standard religious building. The temple served as a place of worship and their religion. The temple was known as the Temple of Jupiter Capitolinus because of the hill that it is it resides on. Tapos yung temple na to, um, dito nag worship we worship nila yung tatlong gods, si Jupiter, si Juno, Puno, and Minerva, or the Capitoline Trio. So next, the temple was an archive for public records, for example, the Sibylline Oracles, or the books containing the prophecy of the Sibyls, were kept, say, were kept at the site, as were some spoils of war, like the Carthaginian General Hasdrubal's shield. So the temple was a location for combined religious and political pageantry. It was a meeting place for the Senate and a physical symbol of Rome's supremacy and divine agency. But in 83 BC, it was destroyed by a fire and palagi itong na, nababago because palagi siyang na, nasisira. Kaya, and today, ito na lang yung mga natitira na ruins na makikita sa Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus. Next is Ate Aris. Hello, everyone. Okay, so for second art, the orator dated uh, 100 BC. Uh, the orator, it is a hollow cast bronze statue that was recovered from Lake Trasimeno in 1566. Uh, the statue is an important example of bronze sculpture in later first millennium BCE, Italy, and, and, it, and I'm sorry, indicates the, the gradual romanization of Etruscan art. Uh, the life-size statue depicts a draped adult male standing with his right arm outstretched. The figure adopts a frontal pose with a slight contraposto stance or shifting his weight onto his right leg. Based on the inscription on the statue, uh, the figure is identified as Paulus Metellus. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, he is clearly a magistrate and his posture seems to be that of the orator who is in the process of addressing the crowd. Leaving their, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the toga is wrapped around the body, leaving the right arm free. As you can see, there it is. Uh, on his feet are the high boots that were commonly worn by Roman senators. His expression and slightly open mouth make him a compelling figure. So that would be all for my So the number three, head of an old Roman, 60 BC. The name of the individual depicted is now unknown, but the portrait is a powerful representation of a male aristocrat with a hooked nose and strong cheekbones. The figure is frontal without any hint of dynam dynamism or emotion. This set the portrait apart from some of its near contemporaries. The portrait head is characterized by deep wrinkles, a furrowed brow, and generally an appearance of sagging sunken skin, all indicative of the rustic style of Roman portraiture. So it is the head of a Roman patrician, AD based on the original dated back to 80 to 70 years. It is also called the Patrician Torlonia from the name of the palace in Rome and depicts an old Roman aristocrat. The portrait shows extreme realism of a man tired and aged with deep wrinkles. In this portrait, we can read some of these values, in particular, the, seri the seriousness of mind gravitas and the virtues of an intense public career.
And next is the nylon mosaic of Palestrina. So the mosaic depicts a flooded nilotic landscape inhabited by animals, both real and imaginary. Ptolemaic Greeks, Ethiopian hunters, and priests performing rituals in their magnificent temples. The figures are often labeled in Greek characters, and the entire scene may represent a vivid mop of the Nile as it flows from the highlands of Ethiopia to the delta in the Mediterranean Sea. Um, so in addition, um, this mosaic is a part of a classical sanctuary grotto in Palestrina. So Palestrina um, is a town east of Rome in central Italy. So add ko lang din yung measurement ng Nile mosaic. So it has a width of 5.85 meters and a 4.31 meters of its height. Okay, good evening. Um, and the fifth is the grave relief of um, Publius uh, Aedus and Ada from 30 BC. This work is a rectangular mar marble sculpture carved in high relief. relief. <clears throat> the person on the left is Publius Aedus, portrayed as an old man typical of the very thick style. The person on the right is Ada, Aja. In contrast to the age shown in the Publius Aegis face, uh, Aegis face is more youthful and, and ide uh, uh, idealized. Two rings can be seen on her left hand, which signifies her marriage to Aegis and their wealth. Publius, uh, Aegis, and Aegis were husband and wife underneath the portraits is a carved in, uh, inscription that tells us who is portrait. And next. The funerary re relief is uh, significant because it was used to show off the status of citizenship that the former slaves achieved. Having a funerary relief would have been an expense. The two figures are dressed as well of citizens of the Roman Republic, would have dressed with Publius Aegis uh, Amphio wearing a toga and idea wearing a chiton and cloak. It is known that the two are husband and wife, which is shown by her head being turned in his direction. Um, this funerary relief is a way to show the status that Publius Aedus and Aedia achieved during life as freed people. Okay, so today I will be introducing the Imperial Rome during 27 before Christ up to 476 Anno Domini. So Augustus' rise to power in Rome signaled the end of the Roman Republic and the formation of imperial rule. Roman art was now put to the service of aggrandizing the ruler and his family. It was also meant to indicate shifts in leadership. So dito sa Imperial Rome, unti-unti nang nabuo yung imperial rule and natapos na yung Roman Republic nung umupo na si Augustus Caesar or siya na yung namumuno sa buong Rome. So yung Roman art naman is yung Roman art such as the sculptures, statues, and other arts, ginagamit na siya to aggrandize or to increase the power or wealth of the ruler the ruler and his family. So dito sa statue, mapapansin nyo, this is the statue of Augustus of Prima Porta. Meron dito ang baby na nasa baba. This is Cupid or Venus Sun, and it it emphasizes Augustus' assertion of divine lineage of the Julian family, na founder ng Italy and ng and also to Venus. So next slide po. 
Imperial art often harkened back to the classical art of the past. Classical or classicizing, when used in reference to Roman art, refers broadly to the influences of Greek art from the classical and Hellenistic periods, or 480 to 31 before Common Era. Classicizing elements include the smooth lines, elegant drapery, idealized nude bodies, highly naturalistic forms, and balanced proportions that the Greeks had perfected over centuries of practice. So yung imperial art is, it is often, um, nare-recall siya sa classical art. Yung art na ginagamit is, um, mas na-influensyahan siya ng Greek art na nagsimula pa sa classical and Hellenistic period. Next slide po. Augustus and Julio Claudian dynasty were particularly fond of adopting classical elements into their art. Later, imperial art moved away from earlier classical influences and Severan art. And Severan art signals the shift to art of late antiquity. The characteristics of late antique art include frontality, stiffness of, stiffness of pose and drapery, deeply drilled lines, less naturalism, squat proportions, and lack of individualism. Important figures are often slightly larger or are placed above the rest of the crowd to denote importance. Constantinian art continued to integrate the elements of late antiquity that had been introduced in the Severan period, but they are now developed even further. So yung, um, during the dynasty of Augustus and Julio Claudian, nag, yung art pa rin nila is nagpo-focus pa rin sa classical art. Pero later on, nung nag-start na yung Severan period, from classical, naging late antiquity na. So, yung art, yung art dati nung sa dynasty pa nila Augustus is more on classical art na na-influensya ng Greek. But nagkaroon ng transition to late antiquity, which is yung art is naging more iconic and more, more stylized art na na-influensya ng Middle Ages. Next are the five art contributions of Imperial Rome, which will be um, presented by Ms. Thea. Uh, first one, we have the marble statue of um, Bearded Hercules. Um, this statue is a Roman copy of a Greek original, and it is believed that it may have been a decoration in public bath. Restoration works have been undertaken to various areas of the statue, but are thought to accurately reflect the stance of the statue. Mens include the smooth lines, elegant drapery, idealized new bodies, highly naturalistic forms and balanced proportions that the Greeks had perfected over the centuries of practice. Um, without doubt, this sculpture represents courage, masculinity, and the importance of Hercules' legacy. The marble statue of Hercules Perded derives from the Flavian dynasty around the same time as the youth, youthful Hercules. Okay, next is the glass gold band bottles, uh, first half of first century. This uh, opulent looking vessel is uh, characterized by strips of gold glass made of a layer of gold leaf sandwich between two layers of colorless glass. During the Hellenistic period, gold band glass was uh, predominantly used in uh, in the creation of alabastra. The Romans, however, inspired by the Hellenistic models, applied the medium for the creation of a variety of new shapes and forms. For the part 27, um, marble statue of Kailis is second century. The cult of Kaibal, the mother goddess of Anatolia, had been brought to Athens by the 
8th century BC, a statue of the Antron, goddess com accompanied by lions and holding a symbol stood in the midst of a prominent building in a agora, the marketplace of Athens, over the hundred small marble copies. Such this have been found in the agora. So meaning, based on a gold and ivory statue by the Greek sculptor Pedias or Agora Kiritus of the late 5th century BC. Um, what distinguishes the Septimus Severus Arc, the Sacra Via, the Triumphal Parade inside the Roman Forum, contains numerous triumphal arches due to this. Um, the Semper Severus Arc was distinguished as a unique art. Only those who traveled by foot could see the monument because of its location near the Comet, Cometium. So, the, um, next slide, part 28, the Augustan Portland being stated between um, AQN to A25. The Portland base is a Roman. Camugla space, this is believed to have been between 81 and 25. Although some academic flavor lower BC dates. So since the day early 18th century, when it becomes the most well-known example of Roman Camugla, many glass and porcelain artisans have drawn inspiration from it. The Portland base is the most well-known example of Roman commu glass and has served as an inspiration to numerous glass and porcelain makers. Since roughly the beginning of the 18th century, it is dated to between AD and AD 25. Though low PC dates have some scholarly support, it was initially um, noted in room between 1,600 and um. 1,601 and has been housed in the British Museum in London since 1810. It is open on display on room 17 of Sportage by the Museum in 1945. So next is the Head of the Emperor Constantine. In the courtyard of the Capitoline Museum room, originally the head was attached to a 30 foot statue of Constantine sitting on a throne. Unlike the wizened faces of the early emperors, Constantine's face is smooth, his expression resolute, his huge eyes focus on some distant goal. So, um, hindi gaya ng mga naunang emperors. Um, yung mukha ni Constantine is smooth and yung mata niya, um, makikita mo talaga doon na meron siyang goal. So, magbigay lang ako ng in brief introduction about Constantine. So, Constantine the Great was the first Christian emperor of Rome and his reign had a profound effect of the subsequent development of the Roman and later the Byzantine world. Now let's proceed to Roman architectures. As as we can um, recall, another example of Roman architecture is the Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus that was presented earlier. So another example will be presented later. Now Roman architecture was unlike anything that had come before. The Persians, Egyptians, Greeks, and Etruscans all had monumental architecture. The grandeur of their buildings, though, was largely external. Buildings were designed to be impressive when viewed from outside because their architects all had to rely on building in a post and lintel system, which means that they used two upright posts, like columns, with a horizontal block known as lintel, laid flat across the top. So that the yung mga um, Persians, Egyptians, Greeks, and Etruscans sa, sa Yung panglabas na, um, panglabas na kita ang kanilang mga are what they're improving rather than the insides. But Roman architecture is different because they uh, 
improve both the inside and the outside of the buildings. So Roman architecture differed fundamentally from this tradition because of the discovery, experimentation, and exploitation of concrete, arches, and vaulting. A good example of this is the Pantheon, which will be explained later. So thanks to these innovations from the first century, Romans were able to create interior spaces that had previously been unheard of. Romans became increasingly concerned with shaping interior space rather than filling it with structural supports. As a result, the inside of Roman buildings were as impressive as their exteriors. Parang sinabi ko kanina, what Rom Romans um, improved their insides also. So next. Um, so Pantheon. So Pantheon is a building in Rome that was begun in 27 BC by the statesman Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa, probably as a building of the ordinary classical temple type, rectangular with a um, gabled roof, supported by a colonnade on all sides. It is a circular building of concrete faced with brick with a great concrete dome rising from the walls and with a with the front porch of Corinthian. Columns supporting a gabled roof with triangular pediment. Beneath the porch are huge bronze double doors, 24 feet or 7 meters high, the earliest known large example of this type. Okay, so next is the Colosseum. The famous Roman amphitheater, the Colosseum, was built between 70 uh, CE and 72 and was enjoyed by Roman citizens during the height of the Roman Empire. The Colosseum, also named uh, the Flavian Amphitheater, is a large amphitheater in Rome. It was built during the reign of the Flavian emperors as a gift to the Roman people. Okay, so aside from the games, the Colosseum also hosted dramas, reenactments, and even uh, public executions. Eventually, the Romans' interest in the games won. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire, the Colosseum began to deteriorate. A series of earthquakes during the 5th century CE damaged the structure, and it, sorry, it also suffered from neglect by the 20th century, nearly two-thirds of the original building had been destroyed. So for the part 33, Art of Septimus Severus, the Art of Septimus Severus erected in 203 stands in Rome and commemorates of the Roman's victories over the Parchers in the final decade of the second century CE, the triple trample art was one of the most richly decorated of its type. And even today, although badly damaged, it stands in the forum Romanum as lasting and imposing monument to Roman vanity. The uh, art of Septimus Severus, a trample art was made of white marble and consecrated in 283 AD, located near the Northeast corner of the Roman Forum to honor the triumphs over the Parthian that Emperor Septim Severus and his two sons, Caracalla and Jetta, achieved during their wars in 194 and 195 AD and 197 AD. So next is the Temple of Portunus. The Temple of Portunus is a well-preserved late second or early first century BCE rectangular temple in Rome, Italy. Its dedication to the god Portunus, a divinity associated with livestock, keys, and harbors, from which is fitting given the building's topographical position near the ancient river harbor of the city of Rome.
So next is the octagonal hall of the do Domus Aurea. The construction of the Domus Aurea, also known as Golden House, has been considered the most extravagant construction in the history of Rome. Its huge golden dome, thanks to which it received its name, was one of the many extravagant elements of its decoration. This building had seven stock with semi precious stones and finished in ivory precious mosaics, pools, and fountains, plus an artificial lake. Most of the walls were covered in frescoes. The rooms finished in white marble with shades that played with light. The domus area also had pools and fountains that echoed the sound of water in the hallways. So this, this is an architectural model of the octagonal hall of Nero's Bermus Aurea, or Golden House. After the great fire of AD 64, they destroyed much of and what is now the Colosseum Valley. Nero used the area to build a lavish palace. The octagonal hall was Nero's banquet hall, which is significantly architecturally for its concrete dome. The dome has five dining, dining rooms, face the octagonal hall with waterfalls cascading down their back walls made with ivory and sliding panels. Next stop. Now to conclude, Roman art is diverse because of many um, nations going there, such as the Greek, the Egyptians, and others. Uh, the, it influenced the, their um, arts and structure. Next is Roman art is different and brilliant because um, they were not really into art, but they easily adapt to many things that influence this influence them. So next is Roman art presented their independence and power. As you can see, this Roman art did um, differentiate them from other nations because the, this Roman art uh, presented their power and their their uh, um, power and independence from other nations. And that is all. Thank you for listening to us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Paul.